Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a video that I have wanted to make for a really, really long time and it's going to be all about vibrato and specifically viola vibrato. There are a lot of videos out there about violin vibrato and I will link some of the best ones in my opinion <laughs> in the description bar below. So if you are looking for those then head over there but I mean some of this may still be useful to you but I am specifically going to be talking about viola vibrato because they are very very different which I have been finding out to my cost for the past 10 years or so. If you are new to my channel then my name is Heather and I'm a professional viola player living and working in the UK and I make videos just all about freelance life, musician life, different playing styles, all that kind of stuff. So if that sounds like your kind of thing then please please do subscribe to my channel, it would be so so good to have you. Now this is actually a video that I have wanted to make since the very dawn of my channel but I actually discounted myself from making it for a really really long time because I feel like we all kind of have that technique or that little technical aspect of our playing, that one little thing, that piece, that section of a piece that's kind of our kryptonite. And for years and years and years, mine was vibrato. My playing history is that I was a violinist until I was 16. I then did my grade eight and was a bit like, what do I do now? And my teacher was like, well, learn the viola. It's really, really, you know, good to have, a good skill to have. And then I just kind of never stopped. However, that did mean that I didn't really learn viola technique as such. I kind of just got given a viola and told to get on with it. And that resulted in quite a few issues for me <laughs> that I have been working out as I go through. But then I realized that actually, the fact that I've had to work on this so hard and for so long actually means that I think I have quite a lot of good advice around this topic and just things to do, things not to do, things that are just really not helpful that everybody seems to kind of tell you to do but then they don't really have a reason why you should do it. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. So I hope this will be really really helpful and that it will just allow you to develop your own vibrato because it's all unique and we'll get onto that but yeah I'm gonna stop rambling. You can tell I'm just, I'm just very excited to film again guys. So just to preface the little exercises and stuff that I'm going to show you, I am primarily going to be talking about arm vibrato because I often find that it's much, much easier to start with the bigger movements and then bring them down. So you start with arm, then you can go to wrist and then you can go to finger vibrato and there's, you know, we can make a whole video on each of those but today I'm primarily going to be talking about arm vibrato because in my experience it's just the best one to start with because it's the biggest movement, it's using the bigger muscles and then you can work on bringing those movements down. Whereas if you start with the small movements, again, this is all in my experience, that can result in a lot of tension because you're focusing on these tiny little movements and then your whole body just kind of turns into this like robot and that's the last thing we want when it comes to vibrato. Now, some people will suggest that starting your vibrato kind of almost with your instrument kind of in a cello position and then sliding up and down can be really helpful. In my experience, that has been really counter intuitive and not helpful at all, purely because like uh, we don't play like this as viola players. We we play up here. So having this movement down here is actually not very relevant in like to me so I wouldn't recommend you start there you can always give it a go and give it a try if it works for you fantastic but it never did for me so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about it in this video but starting off this is when the camera is not gonna want to focus on me it's just gonna want to focus on the viola but that's fine because I mean this is this is it's prettier than me anyway so it's fine the first thing we're gonna start off with is a really really simple cleaning the strings movement. Now you can actually do this with a cloth in between your fingers if you want but again the cloth isn't going to be there when you're actually doing your vibrato so in my mind not entirely helpful. But without the bow and if you want you can absolutely support the instrument with your right hand. If that gives you a little bit more confidence then that's absolutely fine. We don't want to rely on it but for this period of time it's not a problem. And what you want to start with is just get your fingers really really relaxed no pressure on the strings whatsoever and we're literally just moving our hands up and down the strings. Now, what I want you to be focusing on when you do this is not necessarily your hand 
per se. One of my biggest hang-ups for ages was that I was concentrating on like my fingertip and then my finger and you know, all of these little tiny, tiny little movements which we'll get there, like it's fine. What I want you to focus on is using the big muscle down your back to be supporting your arm. You have massive, really, really strong muscles that run up and down your spine that basically keep you standing up, okay? Those things are strong. So you wanna be utilizing them because if you can utilize them, it means that the rest of your shoulder, your arm, your elbow, your hand, your fingers, they're free to do their thing. But if you're using, say, your bicep to hold your viola up, number one, you're gonna get tired really quickly. And number two, you're just not using your best asset and you're just gonna get tired and tense. So we don't want that. So using your big muscle down your back, really let that shoulder joint, your left shoulder kind of sink into its socket. Let it kind of get really comfy and chilled. It doesn't need to be doing anything fancy at this point. And I'm just literally cleaning the strings. You may find after you've done this that your fingertips are black and you do actually need to clean your strings. <laughs> definitely remember that. I was in a uh, consultation lesson and the, the uh, teacher had me do this and then she was like, you need to clean your strings because <laughs> I licked my fingers, they were black. A little bit embarrassing. So. so with this, I would recommend starting on the D string because it's just sort of the most comfortable string to play on, generally speaking. So just nice and loose and what you've got to make sure again like i said you're using those big muscles and everything else is super super relaxed you want enough weight through your fingers that they're kind of dragged like that but you don't want to be pressing okay nothing like that if you can feel your bicep getting involved at all release the weight make it lighter you can even just go completely no weight on there at all so going up and down the D string, nice and happily, and then shifting it over to the G string, C string, really bring that elbow really underneath. Feel your shoulder rotating in the socket, okay? You wanna feel that movement in here and back down here. And then up and down the A string. I would recommend that this is where you spend a long time time because this movement needs to be really relaxed really really easy for the rest of it to work so if you find you have any tension at this stage stay here for a long time and as you're doing this once you've gotten comfortable i always start with my third finger to me it's just one of the most balanced in your hand it's nice and easy then i would recommend you go to your second finger same thing sliding up and down each of the strings in turn, and then first finger, same thing, fourth finger, same thing. Every single finger should be as relaxed as any of the others, because if you get it in your head that one finger is particularly difficult, it will always be particularly difficult for you. So just keep it all nice and relaxed. And as you are moving in between the strings, really think about where does my elbow need to be in order to support my hand. For example, if I'm on the A string, and I have my elbow really, really far underneath, there's, there's, there's nothing underneath my hand giving it any kind of support. Whereas if I bring my elbow just, just a tiny bit further underneath the viola, I've got support, okay? And I feel secure, and I feel like I can, I can do my thing. Now, obviously, when you actually get higher in the positions, your elbow needs to come up. But just really, we don't need to worry about that for now really think about where does my elbow need to be in order to keep everything nice and stacked on top of each other and working comfortably. Like I said, stay on that step for as long as you possibly can. At the moment, we're in lockdown, nobody's going out and playing anything anyway, so you've got the time to take yourself back to basics, you know, stay on that step for like a week or more and just really focus on it and make sure you are concentrating. Don't do this while you're watching telly, don't put your YouTube video on, don't be scrolling on Instagram with the other hand. Really concentrate. Now this will mean that you can only do it for short periods of time and that's totally fine. Remember, little and often is so much better than slogging away at this for an hour and not actually paying attention to what you're doing. Okay, so once you feel like you've gotten this motion down and you're, you're happy, all your fingers are working nice and relaxed, 
we want to bring this movement down a little bit so still without the bow and you can still be supporting if you want to but I would recommend at this stage you start practicing with and without your hand like I said we do not want to be relying on the right hand to support the viola get yourself into third position and again I would recommend starting on your third finger but just have a little play around see which one feels most comfortable for you and now we're going to do a rocking motion so we're going to start with our finger nice and flat to the instrument and we're going to pull our elbow in and rock it forwards and back rock it forwards and back rock it forwards and back nice and relaxed okay sorry i'm just going to hold it up so that you can you can see a little bit better but if you've got this nice relaxed motion and making sure that that knuckle is really really relaxed and at this point pay i don't want to say pay particular attention because that might mean you fixate on it and it'll get tense but make sure that your thumb is super super relaxed okay you should be able to wiggle it around no problems remember you can use your hand to support the instrument if you need to so that you don't feel like you're going to drop it so really nice relaxed movements and then again try that with your different fingers now the reason we're doing this in third position rather than in first position, because I know we often think about first position as being the easiest, is that in third position, you've actually just got a little bit more support, okay? When you're out here, the weight distribution is very, very different. When it's here, your head can take the weight, your hand can take a bit of the weight, and your finger can just concentrate on being really, really relaxed, which I know sounds a bit strange, but you know what I mean. Trying your different fingers. Now, at this point, you may want to experiment with keeping other fingers down whilst you're using one of the others. So, for example, with my third finger, I actually really, really like having my second finger down. And then same thing with my fourth finger. I just find that this keeps my hand nicely balanced. There are people that want to have it completely free. So none of these fingers are touching apart from the fourth and they find that much more comfortable. Play around. Remember, your body is not the same as mine. It's not the same as your teacher's. It's not the same as the person who's doing the video online, whatever. You're very, very different. So play around. Providing it's working efficiently and you're getting the result that you want, then you're good. I will always say that learning technique sort of by the book first is a really good place to start. And then you can start adapting it to your own personal needs. But sort of find out how people recommend you do it first <laughs> and then you can start tweaking gives you a better base to go from. Once you've got the hang of that on the D string again, then start moving that over to different strings, trying different fingers. And at this point as well, you can start, sorry, I keep going, I keep going too quickly, keep it slow. And now you may notice my first finger pushes back. <laughs> this is something which I have been told many times is something that I should not do. And maybe they are correct. But focusing on that and going, I must not let my first finger stretch back actually caused me so much more tension than if I just let it relax and do its thing. It's not an issue. Whereas if I'm like, I must keep it down, you can see like instantly I get tension. Whereas if I just let it relax, the freedom of movement is so much greater. So for me, this is an example of just because somebody tells you that you shouldn't do it, <laughs> pinch of salt always. Like I said, your body is not their body. Okay, so next up we have the next step on this process. And this is the part that my husband absolutely loves because I mean, it sounds beautiful. And quite frankly, I think one day I should give a recital of me just doing this. But it is of course the siren noise and young kids love doing this. Um, you may struggle to get them to stop <laughs> and to all the parents who are watching this and wanting to help their children to uh, improve on their vibrato then uh, I'm sorry but it does work so you know it's worth it kind of get yourself into third position it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly in tune or not but that's not what we're worrying about right now okay but you know get yourself get yourself in third position so we're gonna start again with our third finger and we're just gonna do really simple backwards and forwards motions in duplets. So just. Okay, 
okay? And I would say do a couple of bows of that. And then we're just going to move on to a different finger. <laughs> The others keep going okay you don't need to listen to me doing the whole thing because that's painful for everybody involved and then once you've done that move on to triplets <laughs> focusing on using those big muscles. I'm sat on a bed right now, so it's not, not the best place to sit because I keep nearly falling off. But make sure that you're using those big muscles, keep everything really relaxed. If at any point you feel tension creeping in, take it back a step. Tension is sort of, it's just the killer of vibrato, but it's also one of the most difficult things to combat because we're trying so hard to get it right <laughs> that tension can very, very easily creep in and that's definitely been my issue. So keep everything really, really relaxed and if at any point you feel tense, put the instrument down, give yourself a wiggle, have a bit of a stretch, get that tension out of your body and then come back. Now move on to fours. <laughs> And so on and so forth. I would stop there for now. Once you're really comfortable with the twos, the threes and the fours, then you can move on to the fives, the sixes, the sevens and go from there. But for the purpose of this video, stick to the basics and get those really, really comfortable before you move on to anything more complicated. The next step with this siren kind of sound is to get a metronome involved. So Get your metronome and if you don't have one just type metronome into google and a little metronome comes up that you can use super super easy it's actually what i'm using at the moment because i dropped my metronome and it broke and i tried to order a new one and then they were out of stock and then to be honest i've just carried on using the google one so just type it in set it to 60 beats per minute and initially you want to be doing groups of two to each beat then threes then fours exactly how we were just doing there just add another layer of discipline and skill involved and it's just a little bit harder but just gives you a little bit more structure and those are the main exercises that i have found have been the most helpful just a few general points about vibrato that kind of apply to everything you do. I've mentioned a couple of them such as using the big muscles in your back and then keeping your fingertip really nice and relaxed. But then there's a few other things that I've kind of discovered through really thinking about this, breaking everything down, and I hope they'll be really helpful. The first one is something that I definitely was doing less effectively than I could have done for a long time because I was coming to it from a violinist perspective and that was that I was trying to vibrato right up on my fingertip. No, there's nothing wrong with this. This is a particular kind of vibrato that can be really, really nice, really effective, and you may want it in your arsenal. But when you first start off with your viola vibrato, and if you're wanting to improve it, use much more of the pad of the finger. So you can see, instead of being up on the fingertip like this, I'm back here. This means that I have all of this wiggle room to play with. Whereas if I'm up on my fingertip, I've got a much, much smaller surface area. And this can result in just a slightly, not tighter sound exactly, but just less of that warm, rich sound that we want from our viola. So if you're on the pad of your finger, that can really, really help. And something which ties, ties into this, and I'm, I'm sorry, because you're not particularly gonna like me for this one, but watch how long you let your fingernails get. Now this is something which was drummed into me from such an early age that I actually now literally, I cannot stand long fingernails. They give me the icks, I'm just like, Ugh. Anyway, but keep your fingernail nice and short. Careful you don't make them sore, but if you've got fingernail that's getting in the way, you're not gonna be able to get that really warm, soft sound. It's just gonna get in your way. So keep your fingernails nice and short and tidy. Another thing to really think about are all the angles of your arm, your wrist and your finger. Now this is something which, like I was saying before, you know, me doing this, I got told off for doing this for so long and I'm probably gonna get told off for doing this again but it's what works for me, so that's what I stick with. But for me, the angle of where my elbow is to where my wrist is, is something that's really, really important. For example, if you're pushing out like this, you are just chopping off your tendons and they are not 
going to work effectively. Whereas if you keep your wrist nice nice and straight and if you have an ever so slight flex this way an ever so slight flex this way but it's what works for your arm it's okay we just don't want these extremes going on you know we've seen people play like this and they like i don't understand how how does anybody play like this i don't understand anyway but that's not going to help you because you're just going to whack into the viola you're going to whack into your neck and that's not comfortable for anybody involved so keep your wrist nice and built on top of the foundations which again is where big muscles down your back come into play. Another thing is to really remember that your vibrato will not be exactly the same as anybody else's. Be very wary of any teacher that says you must do it like this, it's the only way to do this. You know, if you have your wrist slightly like that, then it's wrong. Be very wary of that because, like I said before, your body is not their body. Your body does not function in exactly the same way. We need to adapt and change depending on our own physicality, the instrument that you've got, the shoulder rest, the chin rest. It all plays a part so be slightly wary of anybody that says you have to do it like this because you're not them so play around with things find what works best for you and then and then do that providing you're nice and relaxed and everything is working as it should then you do you basically now this is probably my favorite tip because for me it was the biggest eureka moment when it came to my vibrato and it may sound slightly strange but think about mentally connecting your two elbows. <laughs> and by that I mean they need to be working together. I think particularly when we're working on vibrato, obviously, you know, it, we're thinking about the left hand and that's important. But the right hand is actually where the sound is coming from. All of this business is just supplementing it. So what I really, really do is I literally focus on my two elbows and if they're kind of working together I often find that my shoulders drop everything becomes more relaxed and I'm much more into the string the sound is much richer everything kind of clicks in and works so that's something which may take a little bit of practice it's just about mentally connecting to those parts of your body and just making sure that they're working together it'll mean that the bow speed is working with the vibrato speed it will mean that everything is working with each other and not against each other because so often we can kind of get our two hands into fights with each other so just connecting those two elbows will just mean that everything is in sync and that for me was just the biggest ah oh, moment because from that point on my vibrato really started to change the next two are kind of connected to each other because it's to breathe and to keep your knees soft now i sort of misunderstood what people meant when they said soft knees for ages because i was like are you just walking around with your knees bent you're crouching to the floor that's not what they mean at all it's just simply not locked so if you've got your knees locked into place everything upwards from there is tense just ever so slightly so if you relax into your knees your knees relax which means your back relaxes which means your shoulders relax which means that everything else connected to them does as well so keep your knees slightly soft and then obviously breathe this is another reason for not practicing these exercises for too long in one go because if you get really into like all the details of it then you can find that you haven't breathed properly in quite a long time so make sure that you're still taking deep breaths because this is really important when you get into playing as well you need to breathe because if you're not breathing your audience won't breathe and then everybody just sort of gets a bit tense and stressed so make sure that you are giving yourself an opportunity to just chill out and just breathe like i said Put your instrument down, give yourself a little wiggle. Your muscles will need to get used to this whole process. So build it up slowly and don't dive in straight into fast vibrato because you will cause yourself a world of issues. Now, I'm very conscious that I think this may be getting on to be quite a long video, so I'm gonna stop it there. But if you would like a part two, there is more I could say about this. It's probably the aspect of my playing that I have thought about the most and gone into the most detail with. So if you would like a part two, maybe with some more progressions from the exercises that I showed you, I'm more than happy to do that, so just let me know. If you have enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please do feel free to share it with anybody you like. I don't mind teachers sharing my videos with their students, etc. More than happy. And yeah, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more from me. Have a great week, guys and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye bye. What's that word? Finessing. You can kind of finesse it down. No, that's not the right word either. I don't know.
don't know what I'm trying to say, to be honest. 